Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, where we're going to show you how to weld nickel base alloys or heat resistant alloys. We're in the Indiana Welding Garage, and so we're set up here with a Precision TIG 375, and we're going to weld this material on DC negative. Now, just so you know, there's a couple of characteristics about the material that are a little different than what you'd be used to if you've welded stainless steel. Well, the rule of thumb, one amp per thousandth of thickness still applies, but the travel speed slows down, and it's mostly because the material is very sluggish. So we're going to do a series of Econel 625. This is the beginning part of the series, part one. And part one is just going to show you exactly how to lay down a bead on plate. So if you've never welded this, do a bead on plate first, and then you can go to the second part and third part. When you do a butt weld, it's a little different. When you do a fillet weld, it even gets a little more different. But there's some characteristics that we're going to show you during the welding. Not only slow travel speed, but when you get to the end of a weld termination, this material has a tendency to try to crack, and it'll do it as soon as it starts cooling off. It'll create a star crack. The way to prevent that is dab a little extra filler and then as you back off on your foot control and the puddle re-solidifies, move the puddle a little bit over to the side of the weld, almost to the parent material of the part. So again, this is the beginning phase and we're going to use the same techniques that we use in stainless steel. Argon, I've got a 1 16th diameter tungsten, 2% thoriated, it's got a point on it. We're going to run about 15 to 20 CFH of argon. So let me get my safety gear on and I'll demonstrate a bead on plate. Okay, I've got arc initiation. I'm, I'm only running maybe 30 or 40 amps. Just to show you that it's kind of a sluggish material. Very slow to respond. You know, it actually has a surface. It's not a contamination, but it's just all the alloys trying to mix together. You know, it is high temperature. It's a 24, 2500 degree, you know, melting temperature. So just get your technique going very much like stainless. Again, a little bit slower, let it soak. And then when you get to the end of your weld termination, back off very, very slowly, and then pull your puddle over to the side of the weld and stop. Okay, do this several times, but you need to know that there's some characteristics in, in Inconel that are a little bit different than stainless. And the fact is the material distorts, it moves around a lot, so it's okay to go ahead and tack your part in numerous places. I wouldn't just put a tack at each end, I'd put a tack every inch. And it's going to try to overlap on you when you do a butt weld, so make sure you get those tacks penetrated real well. Uh, other than that, this is the best way to get started. You can see there's an oxide layer on here. I'll go ahead and I'll wire brush it. Now, you know, there is some chromium in here, so, you know, using argon backup is absolutely necessary. But take a look how this will actually clean up. Fairly decent. It doesn't take a lot of uh, robust uh, motion back and forth, but it does clean up when it cools off. It's a very tenacious oxide, so it doesn't try to clean off at all. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.